Oh, that yellow. I'm afraid it's not a sponsor, and we'll have to remove it. Who? Oh, yeah, nah, Starbucks don't pay me. <laughs> they got to go. Y'all hear that, Starbucks? <laughs> and you did, got you. All right. Either Wilson and Chelsea Gray left to right. Let's start over there in the corner. Chelsea, you were playing out of your mind tonight. My question is how? <laughs> you seem to be getting every shot you wanted. Can you just talk about the feeling of that, especially in the fourth quarter when you kind of shut it down? <laughs> um. We had a lot of spacing, I think, um, when we're able to knock down shots that lives a lot of room for for us to operate, or for me at least to operate at the top of the key a little bit, or even going downhill. Um, so we were able to do that. And when we're getting stops, like the momentum is just, we just feel a lot better. Things go in um, offensively for everybody. Um, so I don't really know how, I just, I'm, I'm going into my shots um, like I practice them. Um, it's not anything different. Like sh everybody will tell you, like I'll point my feet to the sideline and shoot the ball. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> just because I know sometimes those angles are going to have to be there and I got to get it up. Um, so I work on those things. Um, the only thing I'm not happy is that turnover at the end. Oh, I'm going to be a heart attack. I'm pretty sure we can live with those. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. When she went in like that, yeah, I mean, when Chelsea's rocking and rolling, my biggest thing is just getting the hell out of her way. Uh, at the end of the day, you just got to get out of the way and let people rock. Um, and I'm never going to get in between that. Well, when Chelsea's rocking and rolling, like I've always said, she's the head of our snake. So when she's going... Best thing is how can I make her life easier? What can I do to help her get easier looks or just dictate the game? I don't, I've never ever seen someone honestly live do that and dictate the game and just stay composed in all moments. Like she's built for this moment. This is what, like when she says she's in practice working on these shots, yes, she is. It's familiar to all of us. It's not like a, <laughs> no, it's like a, I'm I know that ball's going in every single time. So when she's rocking and rolling, my biggest thing is how can I make it a little easier? How can I not get in her way? Uh, and just let her have some fun. What did this series look like for you guys in the What did it do to kind of galvanize you and prepare you for the next? Um, I'd say how to close out some games, how to close out moments, um, how to defend different actions with a small lineup, with the big lineup. Like we, we did a different lineup than we haven't really done all year. Um, so it's like a shout out to the coaching staff for trusting in us, but like how to make an adjustment right there on the floor. Um, so it, it just brought us closer. It made us hungry. It made us even hungry. If that was like, I, I'm full right now, but I'm, I'm going to get starving in a minute <laughs> for the next round. Um. So it, it made us tighter as a group. And before the game, uh, Becky Allen said that if you guys believed in yourself, like she believed in you, then great things would happen. So what what was your level of belief tonight? Oh, all in. All in 100%. Um, and I think that's something that I found within myself after uh, game one. Uh, you just got to dig deep dig deep these are moments that you really have to dig deep and lean on one another and, and we before we go out there in, in our starting huddle we're like we got to believe in one another trust one another uh the game's not gonna always go our way this series has been up and down emotional left and right uh but when you believe in, in each other and trust one another uh nothing can kind of waver that so we've been building on that trust acronym since <laughs> training camp and uh i'm glad that it's finally showing through <laughs> When this core storm team, you know, won the championship in 2018 and 2020, they had to go through kind of established championship teams in Phoenix and Minnesota. Do you kind of feel like this playoff series might be a passing of the torch? I don't necessarily mean, think that it's a passing of the torch, but I think you got to beat the best in order to be the best. And I think we're in our groove to where we're we're playing some really good teams. I mean, really good teams to keep it a stack. If they didn't have COVID in, in the beginning, they it's a four seed. Like that's not a four seed out there. So we have to give credit where it's due. Uh, they gave us everything that they had. And respectfully, we they put us in a situation where we had to lean on each other. So I don't think it's necessarily passing a torch. I think it's just a moment in our journey that we're starting to learn that 
we can establish ourselves in this league as one of the best teams. And it doesn't come easy at all. No team in this league is easy. You don't let off on anyone. It could be anybody's night. So I think it's just our, our time in a situation where we're growing and we're building and we're trusting one another. Um, so I don't know if it's passing the torch, but I do think that this is something that the Aces have been wanting to build for a long time. I think Becky used the term bittersweet to talk about this time of the finals to see it's like being very well in the demolition for both of you. Um, for sure. Um, and, and not just Sue, January as well. Like she's had a great career. She's won a championship. She's a champion. Um, she's had a legendary, they both have, um, Sue's obviously been here her whole career. Like she's been here her whole career and has won. She's been through ups and downs. Um, and she's won on every level. And I, that's something you have to respect. That's, that's a legendary player right there. And I know, um, um, She's it's going to be a little bit of emotional for both of them. Um, I'm just glad I was able to compete against them. Yeah, um, teammates who were in the Olympics. Like, yeah, like competing great. against the, you want to compete against the best, and I was able to do that. Danny, Asia, you uh you mentioned game one. Um, I'm not sure if you did the math on this, but you sat for all but four minutes in this entire series. Uh, Dang. One, uh, how are you feeling? And two, I guess, how much did you take on yourself after game one? Four minutes? Four minutes? All but four minutes, yeah. Uh, in I, the best shape of first life. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, I'm not even going to hold you. I feel great. Like, it, even in fourth quarters, I'm like, I'm good. Uh, but the biggest thing, <laughs> the biggest thing, and I've learned this from college with Coach Daly, is mind over matter. If it don't mind, it don't matter. So some of these things, I'm like, I can't, I don't have time to be tired. <laughs> At the end of the day, my teammates need me, whether it's just me being in the in the moment or shooting a shot, they need me. So I feel great. Uh, I, I sleep a lot, honestly. I think that's the biggest thing. Like And not miss out on text messages. For sure. Like, <laughs> uh, I'm knocked out sleep, so I get my rest uh, all the time. But uh, what was your second question? Lord Jesus. <laughs> so I, guess, I guess how much did you take on yourself after game one, knowing that you would come back after these next three games? And oh, I was hot. I was hot. I was hot. I don't think y'all understand how I felt after that game. That was just terrible by me it ate me up like I didn't sleep at night that's one time I didn't sleep uh I was just I didn't understand what was going on with me and I think I figured that I just didn't believe in myself my confidence went away and I've never seen that in Asia ever and uh coming in I just I, I really wanted to establish myself in this league uh and I tried my best to do that every single game after that game I don't know I felt like I disrespected myself by not putting myself first putting my mental first. So uh, after that game, when I took it very, very personal to understand and realize who I am and uh, my teammates rallied behind me and got me the basketball in my spots bucket. and we started rocking and rolling. Nick, and then we got two more. Hey ladies, uh, congratulations to you both as well as the rest of the team. Uh, both of you gave them that work in these basketball streets, especially since game one. Um, how, how much uh, will you enjoy this moment and, and prepare for the upcoming finals matchup? Um, I know the job is far from done and, and you guys are far from finished. Um, that's playoff basketball, men, women, whatever. That's That was a great series. That was a great basketball game. Each, each game, like it kept you on your, your toes the entire time, like, two bad possessions and it's other teams win. Mm -hmm. Like that's how close, that's how like these mistakes or these baskets, they're just as small as detail in the playoffs. And so that was a heck of a, um, a series um, for the sport, for our league. Um, so that, that was great. I had fun. It was, it was fun. Um, obviously it's not as fun when you're on the other end of side, other end of that. But when you step back and realize like that was a great series and a mm -hmm. great moment. For in basketball. Michael Vogel, close us out. Yeah, Chelsea, um, you know, I know you've got another series, the the biggest one of all with the finals, but when you made the decision to come to Vegas a couple years ago, um, it was probably for moments like this and the games you played. Can you just talk about making that decision and what it means to you to, to be in the finals now with this team? Yeah, it was one of the hardest decisions um, that I had to make um, just because I was close to the family. Um, it was a comfortability uh, being there. Um, but 
Kobe always said, like, you got to relish to being in the comfortable situations. That's how you become a champion. That's how you become better. And so I, I just saw a vision um, when I talked with Asia, when she would text me. <laughs> and when you text me, when I actually signed, bro. Oh. Um, we were talking about USA basketball. Other yeah. than that. Um, um, I, I wanted to start some, somewhere new and fresh, but somewhere that was close to California. <laughs> but you, you're crazy. And yeah, this, um, I wanted to start fresh and start new, but also like Asia was a big part of why I came to the Aces. It it was hands down. Like we had conversations. Like after I signed, I was like, "Listen, like this is what I can bring. How can I help you? How can I you become better? Um, how can we go to the next level to get over the hump? How can we go back to the finals? We didn't go last year, and that hurt. It stung. Oh, oh it stung. That was the hardest game. And so going back to why I signed is for these moments of like, all right, we got through the grind. I'm here for this. I'm here for that. Like having that trust factor in myself. Um, to be able to make a change like that and to start fresh and new. Um, it was difficult last year to really do that and make sure I stayed in tune of who I am as a player and a person. Um, but you go through those things to be able to sit here and say that you're going to the finals now. Um, and so it was a huge decision. I, I obviously it paid off. <laughs> Thank you. God, yeah.